Yep, it's time for yet another analysis of the Super Mario Maker 2 Direct. And now that we've covered story mode as well as the online and multiplayer, the analysis machine is now turning its attention to most everything else, including the overall interface, new sound effects, clear conditions, new moves, and more. Okay, now since the Direct actually did a pretty bang up job of covering the fundamentals, as well as the fact that we covered a ton of details already across a variety of videos, we're only going to be covering the truly new stuff here, including some details from beyond the Direct, like the lengthy demo by Game Center CX, as well as snippets from the Japanese website. And then there's the fact that we're under a pretty tight time crunch to get things done for reasons that'll become obvious within a day or so. So with all that out of the way, let's get to it. And let's start with the interface itself, or rather, the lack of it, as there are times where it's nowhere to be found. Well, mostly. As we can see, little yellow lines along three edges of the screen, which appear to be the handles of the toolbars for those respective sides, which we're guessing you can pop in and out at will with either a tap or a swipe. So this should free up a lot of real estate when editing. And thanks to this footage from Game Center CX, we can see they automatically slide out of the way if you drag an object behind them. And don't worry, they'll pop right back into place right after. But here's a question, if the toolbars automatically slide out of the way when the cursor gets close, how do you actually access them when you're playing with the Switch docked? Well, we can see how. With a press of a button, your cursor locks onto the menu instead, where you can then quickly make selections. And that video reveals, or maybe confirms, a few other things too, like providing a better glimpse at how the new object's toolbar works. Now we already discussed back in our first analysis that it now acts as a history of your most recently used objects. But now, we can properly see that in action, where when you use a magnifying glass icon to search for a new object, the object that you select temporarily resides in the search box until you plop it down, at which point it then gets moved over to the recent history, bumping everything else over one slot, except for the objects that you've pinned to the toolbar which remain exactly where you want them. Furthermore, the border that used to appear when using the controller-based shortcuts for moving or deleting objects has been improved, with that border now being pushed out to the edges of the screen itself, and lighting up in the color of the selected mode, such as yellow for moving objects or blue for deleting them. Dragging Mario around while editing seems to work the same way as before, except now you can instantly summon him to the cursor with a button tap, and it even makes a little whistle sound. Cute! So this should be a handy shortcut when editing with the controller. We can also see that creating sub-areas seems to work the same way as before, by dropping down a warp pipe and having Mario travel through it. Only in this case, there's now an option in the quick access panel to instantly pull Mario to the pipe and warp through. Nice! And you might have noticed that there are four different pipe color options too, with their color indicating the speed that enemies or objects will pop out of the mat if you place one inside. Now after warping, we get our first and only look at the editing screen for the vertical sub-areas, which includes a floating scrub bar. Now one thing we haven't seen yet is how large can these areas truly be, as most of the vertical sections shown in the direct are only a single screen wide. However, the player here does move the cursor enough to reveal a second screen, confirming it's at least a little bit wider than we feared. But how much wider? Well, that's a surprisingly complex question, because you might think that Nintendo just took the standard level layout and flipped it 90 degrees vertically, right? And well, no they didn't. Because here's the thing. A normal horizontal level is only 27 blocks tall, and yet, a single screen in Super Mario Maker 2 is 24 blocks wide, as we can see here. Meaning, if they did just flip the orientation of the stage, it would only provide enough room for the screen to scroll horizontally an additional 3 blocks. And why even bother at that point? Well thankfully, a later scene in the direct shows it goes a fair amount farther, because this sliding sequence definitely takes place in a vertical sub-area as it exceeds 2 screens in height and it scrolls horizontally by nearly two full screens worth before the scene cuts away. So we wouldn't be surprised if you do indeed have two full screens worth of width for your vertical segments, as that's pretty much how the horizontal stage worked, providing two screens of height. So that's what we know about the width, but what about the height? And luckily this is a little bit more concrete, or so we think. Now once again, your initial thought might be that the height of the vertical subsections would match the width of the horizontal ones, being 10 screens wide or 240 blocks. And once again, you'd be wrong. Because, do you see that scrub bar there? Well, each segment represents a height of one screen. So if you fill in the rest of the bar with segments of the same length, up to the point where the book end marker would go based on the original game, we can see that will actually stack 11 screens high. And from what we counted, it seems each screen might be 14 blocks tall, which would make the vertical sub areas 154 blocks high in total. And if we're right about this, it would make them considerably shorter than the standard 240 block width of a standard course. But, if you can indeed make these two full screens wide, that would actually give you more total area to play around with than the standard level, as it would be made up of 22 screens or 7,238 blocks, 
instead of the usual 20 screens and 6480 blocks. But at the end of the day, we're just going to have to wait and see. Moving on, we noticed a few other small tweaks to the game's presentation. Like when adjusting the length of objects, the arrows are now noticeably longer than the original game. Likely so you can see them underneath your fat finger, given the fact that the Switch lacks a built-in stylus unlike the Wii U. Next, blocks that contain items have now had the exclamation mark shrunk and moved to the corner, which was likely done in order to make the exact block type more visible, which was pretty difficult to discern in the original game. Oh, and it also seems that the presentation of Super Mario Maker 2 has been enhanced in the small amount of time between the reveal trailer and now, because the bird icons are designing a custom scroll now look like little cartoon birds as opposed to the blander Twitter-like icons from before, and the speed of each section is now also shown along the length of the entire track for that segment. The Direct also revealed co-op mode for the first time, with two people being able to work on the same Switch on the same level. But did you catch that the second player has access to their own mini inventory, where they can easily toggle between the four main object categories to bring up the associated objects? It's pretty neat! Moving on, one major new feature are clear conditions, which are objectives that first have to be met before you can clear the stage, as the gold won't physically exist until you do so as shown here. So clear conditions come in three primary forms, being actions, parts, and status, with the final option here likely only being used to remove whatever condition you've previously set. So for actions, we can see that includes things like reaching the goal without taking damage, or reaching the goal without touching the ground. Yikes! The parts condition is a little bit simpler, forcing the player to either collect or destroy a specific amount of items or enemies respectively. The counter for each one appears to default to whatever the total amount of objects of that type currently in your course are, as in every example here in which a number actually differs, we can see that it can't be raised any higher. But you can, of course, reduce it to whatever amount you want, including all the way down to 1, which allows you to create true boss fights if you want, such as demonstrated with Bowser here or this crazy Bowser Jr. mech here. In any case, a flag icon will pop up next to your character when you've actually met the condition, signifying they can now reach the goal. And as for the status condition, well, that seems to refer to Mario's physical state. The one example we see is that Mario must be in super form to reach the goal, so you can probably adjust that to whatever power-up state you want, or maybe even power-down state, like being small Mario. A flag icon next to your character seems to indicate when you're in the appropriate state, which we can see a second time in this scene, along with the Koopa Troopa car icon. And between that icon, the flag, and the lack of a counter, it seems the goal isn't to kill the Koopa Troopa so much as it is to hijack his ride and take it all the way to the finish. What I'm saying is, you can finally make your very own Grand Theft Mario courses. Luigi, let's get out of here! The Direct also showcased some of the new and returning sound and visual effect options in Super Mario Maker 2. Unfortunately, it was a little hard to hear them over the narrator. But thankfully, the Chinese version of the Direct didn't have a narrator at all. So let's take another look and a listen at all the new sound effects you know about so far. Starting with his lighting effect, one based on Takamaru in the Stamicom game, The Mysterious Mirasami Castle, a shockwave, a Japanese celebration, which is perfect if you want to try and recreate Bowser's Kingdom from Super Mario Odyssey, the pig from Mario Paint, a horror movie-like effect, music notes, a crowd in which we can see Yoshi, Mario, Luigi, Peach, and a bunch of toads all cheering you on, and finally, a Super Famicom one, which unfortunately even the Chinese Direct doesn't help with because of the 3D World music playing over it. But thankfully, a gameplay clip from the Japanese website comes to the rescue. Yep, that's music from the original Super Mario Kart, which is just way too perfect of a fit. So that's all of the new sound and visual effects revealed in the Direct, but we can see and hear some returning ones as well, like the shoe and spring shoe, the cat swipe, as well as this creepy haunted effect, only now with improved fog effects. So we wouldn't be surprised if every sound effect from the original Super Mario Maker is also back, especially since we can see even more returning ones in this Game Center CX clip, such as applause, bells, and fireworks. And that's not all, because at the very start of that clip, we can just barely see the interface for the sound and visual effects for just a few frames. And we can see that they use the same radial wheels as the primary objects. And in them we can see even more returning effects, along with a few new ones as well, like the frog face here, the multiple lips, the solar flare thing, and a party favor, which we see in action a few moments later. Wow. 
うわあ Now, while we can't see how many sound effects there are in total, we can see that they're split up into five categories. And if each one has even just two wheels of five icons each, such as in this first category, that could mean we're looking at a possible 50 sound effects, which would roughly double that in the original game. But again, that's just speculation. It could be less, it could be more. As for the categories themselves, the first one here translates roughly to feelings, and consists of 10 sound effects split up among two wheels. The next one might stand for actions to punctuate a point, especially since we can see some of the sounds in that section based on the red wheel. Then we have this green icon with a pair of arrows, and we have no idea what this one's for. Maybe there are effects to help give directional clues or feedback? The next one over shows what appears to be a pair of stars, which might apply to more atmospheric effects like the horror movie like ones. And finally, the last icon is of a record. And what are records for? For music, of course. So, this might be a music selector, which is likely where the Super Famicom Mario Kart music can be found. And we can't help but wonder there might be an option to make your own music too, like in Mario Paint, which did use several of the same icons after all. Hey, a man can hope, okay? Now, beyond the main interface, we notice some changes with how certain objects behave too. And first up is the checkpoint flag, which for one is now its own object instead of being an alternate form of the arrow, and two, Did you catch the small Mario here didn't turn into big Mario after touching it, unlike in the first game? So, is this a universal change? Or could it mean they can apply different attributes to the checkpoint itself, like awarding different power ups instead? Next up, we have Yoshi, or specifically, Red Yoshi, who can now breathe fire. And as we predicted back in our first analysis, it seems to be on command, rather than requiring you to eat an enemy first, as we can see his cheeks aren't bulging, which they would if he had an enemy in his mouth. But we did notice one or two other odd things about this clip. For one, in both this clip, as well as the one from the reveal trailer in which he also spat fire, not only is Yoshi red, but Mario is also Fire Mario. So is that possibly part of the equation? And we couldn't help but notice that there's also a fire flower right in front of them both. So maybe Yoshi has to eat it first before he can spit fire himself? And speaking of Yoshi, we noticed something else interesting in this multiplayer clip. Specifically, that we can see a Yoshi egg spawns out of nowhere in the exact same way the human players do after dying, which likely means it's actually respawning rather than appearing for the first time. But does this only happen at predetermined egg locations, or just any time a player loses a Yoshi? Next, even though we knew Goombrats were being added to the game thanks to the Japanese flyers, we can see that they're now provided as an alternate form of the Goomba rather than as their own object. Finally, let's move on to the 3D world style. Now, as a reminder, we've already covered a ton of this before, and since we're running low on time, we're only going to touch on the things that really stood out to us that we haven't mentioned it all before. And first up as a fact is that Mario has some brand new moves in this style, such as long jumping and leaping from a handstand, both of which, by the way, we predicted back in our first analysis. But what we didn't see coming is this new twirl jump, which is similar to a secret move in 3D World where you could twirl the thumbstick before jumping to spin in the air. But that clearly isn't quite how it works here. So, could it be the Styles version of the mid air twirl from New Super Mario Bros. U? Maybe. As for the cat suit, we can see a couple of new moves too, like a basic claw swipe as well as a dive, which were both originally in the main game as well. Now, beyond Mario, there are some other new things to note about the objects in this style too, such as how Bonsai Bills also come in cat form, and this causes them to home in right on Mario, much like the Red Bullet Bills from the original Super Mario Maker. Which, by the way, Bonsai Bill can also appear as in the other Mario styles, showing he can home in on any one of them. And just as bonsai bills can be positioned either in the foreground or background, it seems so too can the char bars! Or however you say it. <laughs> as we can see them leap both side to side as well as front to back, and presumably back to front will be an option too. Again, it's one of those neat little touches that really adds a 3D to 3D world. Next, even though we've seen the Porky Puffer before, it's even more terrifying this time as it tries to suck up Mario with a big gulp of air while jumping out of the water, which is likely aided by the wings that have popped onto it. We can also see that, as we predicted, they're more agile than ever before, being able to swim in any direction in order to get at Mario. And speaking of terrifying, check out Meowser, who seemingly climbs up out of nowhere to get at Mario. And like Cat Mario, it seems he too will be able to climb up structures, as we can see him use the very platforms here to pull himself up. And of course, he can still spit fireballs out too. So, yeah, it seems Meowser will be a force to be reckoned with. Moving on, we finally see a few more level themes in the 3D world style. And they look almost exactly as you'd expect, including castle levels that take place outside, snow levels in which the trees even bounce to the music like in the original game, and ghost houses set within libraries, complete with comfy couches, large windows, and even pictures of Boo. 
And then we have this odd looking area, which is based on levels like Rolling Ride Run from Super Mario 3D World. Which at first doesn't seem to match up with any of the themes we know about. But luckily, the Game Center CX clip confirms it as a sky. Which leaves only this theme that hasn't yet been placed. Except, through the process of deduction, it has to be the airship as it's the only thing we have left. Which by the way, we totally called back in our original analysis. Now while that might be it for the themes, we do see a couple of them in a slightly new way that you might not have realized. Because both this underground clip, as well as this forest one, appear to be within a vertical sub-area, with the primary background objects being found far below. And as you can see, the backgrounds at higher elevations grow increasingly less detailed. Okay, we're just about done here, but there are still a few more interesting details I wanted to point out, such as how some of the level themes for New Super Mario Bros. U have received a bit of an upgrade. Caves, for instance, now feature waterfalls in the background, which looks way cooler, and the mushroom platforms in the airship style now look a lot more mechanical. And then there are the new random decorations that pop up whenever you drop down ground tiles, like new taller grass in the New Super Mario Bros. U ground theme, or a higher stack of jewels in underground, and even the Mario & Luigi snowman here originally from New Super Luigi U. And not to be left out, the Super Mario World style gets in on the fun too, with new taller flowers in the ground theme. Okay, so maybe it's not quite as exciting as the Luigi snowman. Next, while the Direct did a pretty good job breaking down how the new moon object works, there is one more possibly exciting detail it didn't touch on at all. And it relates to the Circle of Booze, which we see a couple of times, but only at night. And we think it might be a key part to a new behavior that they exhibit, in which they actually move toward Mario, which they couldn't do in the original game without being on a track. And yet, there are no tracks to be found here at all. So is this a new behavior that only comes out at night? Or what if the tracks themselves become invisible at night? Wouldn't that be neat? And finally, in case you were wondering what would happen if a giant enemy tried to enter a clear pipe, well we can see exactly that thanks to the Direct. And it's simpler than you might think. They instantly shrink in size to make the trip. Yeah, that was a bit unexpected. And there you have it, our main analysis of the Super Mario Maker 2 Direct. But if you want even more, make sure to check out our individual analysis of the story mode as well as the online and multiplayer features. Plus, I'm pretty sure we're going to have a lot more to say about Super Mario Maker 2 soon. Very soon. And with that, thanks for watching, and make sure to hit that subscribe button for more on Super Mario Maker 2 and everything else Nintendo Switch. We'll catch you later. Bye.